So in a previous tech spotlight, I said that for most of this month, I've basically only played like three decks. And when I climbed to Legend at the beginning of the month, I only played three decks. And those were uh, Archer, Assassin, and Sorcerer. So uh, today I'm going to talk about the Archer deck that I've been playing. First and foremost, I got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, this list is very much inspired by Warriors 7 and his Archer list. Uh, he was playing Archer at the end of last season, and I played against him a few times on the ladder. I really liked his deck, so I thought at the start of this season I would try it. Um, turns out it's a lot of fun, it's very effective. Uh, he was hanging out in my Twitch chat at the beginning of the season, we were kind of working through some changes, and he kind of gave it his unofficial stamp of approval. Um, so I've been using the list a lot. Uh, I call this list Sterling Archer because I'm... A meme lord I guess I don't know I, I like cheeky punny names and I like archers so anyway uh, it's a standard mid-range list um, this one's a little bit on the quicker side you'll notice no unstoppable rage in this list no child of her scene uh, we're not trying any of those shenanigans um, it's more like old-school archer and it really is just about like tempo and controlling the board specifically the field lane so how do we accomplish that, right? Well, uh, in the early game, your two best friends are Mournhold Trader. Because of his big body, he can trade very effectively with smaller creatures. And Goblin Skulk, because Skulk, it finds curses, which sets up favorable trades. Um, if you don't have to play the curses, it sets up Leaf Lurker and other things later. Um, Goblin Skulk might, in my opinion, just be the best two drop in the game. He's a very high priority kill target. There will be lots of games where you play him and he just dies, but those games where he doesn't die, he probably just wins you the game. So uh, those two are fantastic. Um, the rest of it is, again, like tempo-oriented stuff, right? So uh, Earthbone Spinner is a body and a great effect and sometimes kills things. Um, Leaf Lurker, typically a body and kills something, right? So you are setting your opponent behind while also developing your board, and that's kind of the theme. Um, Murkwater Shaman doesn't do anything immediately, but much like Goblin Skulk, if Murkwater Shaman survives uh, for like any length of time, you probably win the game. Um, you will definitely win the game against aggro decks. I mean, unless they had a blazing fast start, uh, Murkwater Shaman can like single-handedly shut down aggro decks. Um, he's pretty fantastic. And uh, the end of the game, right? So this deck actually runs a fair amount of reach. Uh, we have Cliff Racer, we have Underworld Vigilante, which I use as pseudo removal specifically for the Shadow Lane, but it does provide additional reach. We have Tazcad, and Morkel Gatekeeper can also help provide additional reach either on your chargers or just on other creatures, um, so that's why I still include him, and the Guard Prophecy is nice as well. And uh, yeah, the last bit is uh, just st other standard tempo stuff, right? So uh, Alina Banak, uh, much like I was talking about earlier with the other creatures, is a uh, removal and a body on the board. Uh, very frequently a two for one. Uh, with all the control mages running around, she's actually been pretty good for me because she will chew through guards and let me continue to pressure. And Belligerent Giant. Belligerent Giant is just belligerent. This is also one of uh, the better cards in the game right now. It's a huge, huge swing. Um, if you can set back somebody's like Night Shadow or set back somebody's, um, you know, other large target, uh, like their Vigilant Giant, like, yeah, they'll get to draw a card again, but they have to basically like redo their turn, right? So, any big threat where they're spending the majority of their magicka, if you are bouncing that with Belligerent Giant, you're getting, you know, again, more bodies on the board, and in that case, a very threatening body, and you basically made them have to retake their turn, right? Like, that is huge. So, we obviously run Belligerent Giant. Um, yeah, fight for control of the field lane, it's really important. Um, that's just, like, standard play anyway and uh, don't be afraid to grind out your opponent. So like this can be very aggressive, but because of the presence of uh, Triumphant Jarl, 
Uh, you do have the ability to play an attrition game. Um, the biggest thing that hurts you is there's not like a way to gain life, but beyond that, you can feel free to play it as a control style uh, if your hand isn't up to snuff for being the aggressor. Um, you almost have to, in the mirror match for example, if you don't get the ring, you almost have to play it as a control style unless they just have a bad opening hand. Um, so in those cases, just focus on fighting for control of the board, and then when the tide has turned, then go aggressive. Um, I've had a lot of success going first with this deck, even in the mirror, um, just by changing my play style. So, uh, yeah, this is one of the decks I've been playing. It's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Uh, I said it earlier, but I want to do it again. Special shout out to Warrior7 uh, for helping with the list. As always, I'm going to end this with uh, showcasing some games. Uh, these are me playing on stream this deck, so I hope you enjoy them. Uh, as always, I really appreciate everybody watching the videos. Uh, until next time, may you walk on warm sands. Bradford Lee? I don't want any of these in my opener. And he's got the ring, ick. Well, that's to be fair, like the streamers are probably the ones that are on. Kappa. They make it too easy. Cut first seems like a really strong opener. Where were you last turn, Ungulum? Son of a bitch. Kajit has had enough. They make it too easy. I mean, I open myself up to... Let's heat things up. I'm eating my guy here, but... Yeah, except for I almost never draw my assassins. In fact, I had a night where I played... Oh, that really sucks. I had a night where I played against Bradford Lee. Um... God, what was it? I played against Bradford Lee five times in my first 11 games. In all five games, I played Ungulum on him, and I didn't draw a single assassin. Well, it was that bad. I'll kill you where you stand. That cut purse over there is a real problem. I'll kill you where you stand. Close ranks. Let nothing through. The night mother will die. I guess I have to do that. I wanted to Skaven over there and swing, but I can't. Because then that goes to a 5-5, five five, and then I can't even Cliff Racer it, which means I'm taking 9 from it before I can even... Alina. Whereas at least this way now I have Ungulum and can Cliff Racer properly, right? Like, it's not ideal, I'll kill you but... Where you stand. He's not out of cards, and it, even if he were, like, he's playing Archer, he's gonna have Yarl. Like, this is just mid-range, like, we're, we're fighting for the board at this point. I'll kill you where you stand. They dare face the This looks like a good turn for Alina. So... Belligerent Giant comes online now for him. He does have the ring. Shocker! Honor and blood. Mm. 
for Balin. <laughs> The forest will not suffer your presence. Oh, I'll kill you while you stand. All right. We must protect the Night Mother. All right, Gurnig's annoying, but not the end of the world. <laughs> My scales move in shadow. Kind of funny. Well, I really wish I could double up this. Um. Yeah, this is still the right tempo play, I think. Again, it doesn't matter if he's out of cards because of Yarl. My scales move in shadow. I mean, I guess we'll keep doing it until we can do something else because the alternative isn't that great. He's just buying time, but we don't have an answer for it. So... You know, he's gonna do it again. Hey now! My scales move in shadow. Just give me an I mean, we have to, we can't afford to take the seven is the problem. Because that takes us down to ten. As much as I would like to develop other cards there, I can't afford to take the seven. And what's worse is if he's running Shadow Shift and Unstoppable Rage, like, he could hit us even harder. See, now we actually have an answer, so... We have... Underworld, let's just take care of that now. Let's heat things up. It's nothing personal. My scales move in shadow. Just give me a name. All right. If we can just control the board and slowly whittle them down. Fucking a. I was just about to say, like, we have our Tazcad, but. He's taking that away from us. It's nothing personal. I'll kill you where you stand. I lurk in the shadows, waiting. Well, that doesn't do us a whole lot of good. So I can task cat in again, but if he's got five uh, damage, thanks, Santiago. So you gotta have like double cliff racer, cliff racer, mournhold trader. Or, uh, Morkel Gatekeeper, not Mournhold Trader, my apologies. Belligerent Giant does nothing here. My scales move in shadow. It's nothing personal. Of course I want your side. So you just have to hope he doesn't have the burst. If he has the burst, then uh, we lose. If he doesn't have it, we probably win. No, good game. We might have just caught a break. Because now even with Cliff Racer or Vigilante, it's not enough. We dive that there. We're not risking too much. 
There's nowhere they can hide. The hunter the becomes the hunted. I'll kill you where you fall. Uh, uh, the forest will not suffer your presence. My scales move in shadow. <laughs> Rags, let nothing through. It's nothing personal. We know. It's nothing personal. Good game, Brad. Good game. It's nothing personal. It was a belligerent giant war. Alright, so we're going first. The lack of two drops continues. Hey, we found one! Against Warrior. You know, I haven't played Control Mage at all this season, mostly because... I've been playing against it a ton, and I was kind of trying to just give it the business, but at this point, if I'm never going to find two drops, I might just play Control Mage at some point tonight. If Four Years was still around, I would ask him if he was still playing that Wisp Mother Control Mage or not. Alright, I guess we try this. It's a mid-range mirror and we're behind on tempo again. Spell sword good? No, spell sword's pretty bad right now, unfortunately. This guy's bane of my fucking existence lately. Just give me a name. Yeah, unfortunately, spell sword is just not very good right now. End of the world. Uh, I haven't genocide, but I also own exactly zero Doomcrag vampires. That may be a shock, but it's the truth. Um. I think we have to do this to set up Leaf Lurker next turn because that guy's a big problem. Uh, Matthew, Matthew Biggers, thanks, mate. I mean, we could have uh, potentially like contracted into Leaf Lurker, um, or not Leaf Lurker, Cliff Racer, I mean, but. It's basically you just four damage, and then next turn I still have to play this to then set up Leaf Lurker. So we might as well just do it now. Save the reach. Try to be responsive. We stand you We're still technically playing from behind at the moment, so. I'm ready for anything. Well, that's a problem. We were fine until that. Close ranks. Let nothing through. That's actually going to go there. It's going to go there because... We're going to Leaf Lurker here. And trade here. Yep. So trade first. Of course we had a first room prophecy, why wouldn't we? That's four games tonight. The forest is more Do that so he can't outright trade. Hell Hello Parko meter. I hope I'm saying that right. Thanks, mate. End of the road. 
Yeah, I don't. I think I only have like 2,000 gems lying around genocide. And I honestly think I'm even missing some probably after that as well. Alright, so we have the curse for that. And Cliff Racer is going to be our play otherwise, it looks it's like. Nothing personal. Oh my god. Like, what do they run? Like, 10 or 12 prophecies, period, and the guy's already hit two? This should be good. You're still here, Tavares? You didn't fall asleep? I had to write myself a note. The hunter becomes the hunted. Do you not fear me, mortal? You should. There. All right, so sower is a real problem. Sower is a real problem indeed. Take you. The forest is my cloak. Probably heading out in the next five minutes. Fair enough. It's nothing personal. I didn't mean to mute him. I mean, we have to take this out. Like, I can't. Of course, I'm on your side. All right. If he's got two drop in wood orc, we lose. Which wouldn't be that much of a shock, if I'm being honest. Just because we've had to beat through a couple of prophecies already. Uh, that actually might have sealed it for us. It's nothing personal. Because now even if he hits like a defender. Didn't see this coming, eh? Well, we didn't need it, but holy shit. We did it, gang! Feels good, man.